The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the December 1st, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there too. Go ahead, let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers then. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading to the north, upward. The Dow's up 135. That's about four tenths percent. The S&P's up seven tenths or 34 points. The Nasdaq 100, a half a percent, 84 points. The Russell up three tenths, about six points. The Semi's up 1.8 tenths. That's 70 points. The Trend is up 36. The New York Stock Exchange 109. You've got gold trading out at 1782.90. Silver trading out at 2246. So gold's up nine bucks and silver's down 30 cents. We'll try to make hay of that. Light sweet crude is up 21 pennies, trading at 66.40. And the lead to charge dollar wise, the upside. We've got Google up 38 bucks, Amberella up 38, uh, ASML Holdings 33 bucks, that's 4%, 21 bucks for Amberella. Boy, they uh, solved something. Lamb Research, LRCX up 23 bucks. I think we took a look at that one uh, yesterday or the day before. I can't remember when we looked at it, or if we did. Uh, and you've got. Uh, to the downside, Mercado Libre, uh, 59 bucks. HubSpot down 39. Monday.com on Wednesday is up 35. That's nearly 10%. Moderna is down 33, nearly 10%. Service now down about 5%. or 31 buckaroonies out there. So where do we want to begin? Uh, Mr. Bill says making head out of gold. What is the other way around? Uh, yes, yeah. Would, would that, wouldn't that be nice? We could make a gold out of A. Well, let's go try to make gold. Uh, Let's let's go right to Goldilocks, should we? Yeah, let's do it. Let me uh, change screens here. So we'll give you the, uh, if you listen to the one o'clock update, I said it looks like silver will put in a bottom today. And so let me get back to where is this chart here? Uh, this set of charts. So we're just going to switch over, take a look at two white background charts. You're going to see gold and silver side by side, and it really tells the picture. So as we look at this set of charts here, the one thing that you'll notice is yesterday, and we're looking at gold right now on the left-hand side, you see that, that 1773 of that red line. That's not a line that Stevie drew in there. That is the TD9 count breakout level of support. And typically, if something pulls back, you want to see it pull out to a, pull back to its breakout level. Well, that's exactly what gold did yesterday. Now, it also formed bar number eight of a TD9 count. You might notice up at the top here for gold, it was bar number nine that identified the top there. Now, in order for bar number nine to complete today, you don't want gold to rally. You don't want it to rally too much more than where it's at at 1785. You need to see it close today below 1791. We're at 1785. So if gold today closes below that 1791 level, we will form bar number nine of a TD9 count. What happens if we close above that? We will not have a TD9 count. We will just simply have price pulling back to test the breakout level of support. Would prefer to see a TD9 count bottom. And that would then suggest that we should see price at least make its way up to the oscillator and change line in about the 1814, 1815 type area. And if price can clear that, then we should see price make its all the way back to that 1881 level. 
So you've got gold with a potential bottom, and I like the price action at least right now as of 111, and would like it to stay this way. So if you are a bull on gold, you too want it to stay this way. You don't want it to, see t to take off uh, today. You don't mind seeing it take off at about 6 o'clock tonight, but you don't want to see it taking off for the rest of the day out here. That lines up in essence with silver. Now, silver formed bar number 9 of its TD9 count yesterday, but remember, the bar, the low of the pattern can form on bars 8, 9, must form on bars 8, 9 to the bar following 9. Here we're at the bar following nine so if gold can do its thing then silver very low even though silver is breaking through its breakout level of 2258 out there it'll still have that valid td9 count pattern and then voila we are likely to see a bottom now if you trade these what you want to do is go to the short-term time frame charts and look for some type of bottoming signals out there to go ahead and get you into the trade, so to speak. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and make uh, – we're not going to make hay out of gold, um, but we are making hay. So that's what, that's what I'm referring to when I take a look at the uh, gold charts. And, again, if you're a bull, you don't want to see price close above that uh, 17 – I think it was 1791 level. I believe that's it. So that's it there. So now let's go back to the, and no questions, although let me just check my phone here, see if there's any emails that have come in. Well, there's a bunch of emails. Uh, that's why I asked you to put a radio show question in there. Uh, in the last three minutes, I've received three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten emails, all junk, by the way. And so it's easy if you put in radio show question, very easy for me to be able to distinguish your email from basically the majority of the junk that I've got. Now, let's go. So we don't have any requests out here. Let's go back simply to the general markets and get a feel for what's going on there. I do believe there's a new profile to share with you that form is trying to form on the Russell 2000. So let's go take a look at it and see what its message is. Whoops, that's not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go right here. So if you take a look at the very right-hand panel is the Russell 2000. We're looking at all four uh, U.S. equity futures contracts, and you'll see a new profile that is attempting to form. Now, the reason why I say it's attempting to form is Stevie's using his advanced Doppler tool out there. So I won't have confirmation until this evening. But right now, we do know where buyers and sellers are. But what we really know is that this has overhead supply. This is a bearish message for the Russell 2000, so long as it stays underneath 2274.60. I would expect a counter trend rally to take as long as this profile does form uh, by Friday to take us up into that range, the 2274 level. But the new profile that formed, it's the only one that has formed so far today, is from the Russell 2000. And its message is a message of being bearish out here. If we take a look at back over to the left hand side, you look at the ES mini and the ES mini continues to find resistance at about the 4658 level. Uh, that is the bottom of its daily profile. And if price is unable to get above that, it's telling us that, OK, uh, it wants to go ahead and try to bust it to the downside. Now, the downside here for the ES mini would be the weekly profile. And that's at the 4504 level. Now, there's some other areas that we can take a look at. I know there's a TD9 count breakout level that's above 4504. But right now, we're just focused in on the profile levels out here. And that would be the downside target. Now, Likely the ES mini is not going to get down there unless we see the NQ close below the bottom of its bullet structured profile, and that's at the 16055 level. But as I mentioned during the update out here, uh, the NQ has not been able to close above the high from the trading day of November 23rd. In essence, we've just simply been trading sideways out here in a little bit of a consolidation. The Dow. Now, equity future contract really not doing a whole lot today, although it has a TD9 count bottom, as does the Russell 2000. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, Education investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So the chart that's up on our screen right now, it's a 30-minute uh, time frame chart for the uh, NASDAQ. So note the NASDAQ, the NQ is the strongest of the uh, four. Uh, you and I, we took a look at uh, Apple yesterday. We saw that uh, Apple was suggesting that it wanted to move higher, which it did. I believe it might have gapped up to the upside here this morning. Uh, but if we take a look at the NQ, we can see that price earlier in the day. And now we're just using a line chart out here. So we're just simply looking at closes, each of the 30-minute closes out here. But what you're going to see, these are the levels of resistance to watch and the first one is about the 16413 level if price can close above that suggest to move up to 16433 you can see those yellow horizontal lines on my screen out there and if the NQ can close above 1643350 then we should have a further rally up here but right now the strong dog is really struggling where it has fallen down in the uh, past out there that's really all that we're doing now we're going to go from this 30 minute set of charts out here and we're going to go over to uh, this one chart I should say and we're going to go over to the 30 minute equity future contract charts the ones that you're used to seeing out here and there was a question about is this the time period to buy the dip or buy the dip in the NQ and so the answer would be uh, you can make that case and the reason that you can make that case is because price is pulled back to its TD9 breakout level and that's at the 16 184 area hasn't hit it right to the T maybe it does that you know while we're on the air here during the next uh, minute or two uh, but that would be a potential level uh, to go ahead and buy the dip we don't have any kind of bottoming signal or anything so that you would what you would be doing is you would just simply be buying a dip of price pulling back to its breakout area now if we were to have said the same thing inside the russell 2000 which formed a nice erodes momentum indicator top earlier this morning you can see how price just blew through that one and now it's on its way to its next level which is at the 2194 area if we look at the es mini the es mini has not made its way all the way back to its breakout level, 4573.25. So if the NQ does turn around here, and you were saying maybe you would take a long in the NQ, I'd say, you know, maybe you take a long in the ES Mini out here because price hasn't even got back to its uh, breakout level. I'm not suggesting that you do that. I am suggesting that you do pay attention to the NQ to help you make those decisions. There's nothing inside the uh, Dow equity future contract that's really going to assist us at this stage here. So it's about paying attention to the NQ. You know where that resistance area is up at the top, in the 16,413, 16,433 level. We do believe if price could close above 16,433, that would tell us about a further rally. If that happened today, a further rally likely into the 
uh, weekend, Thursday or Friday. But anything can change in a, a moment. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the short term time frame charts. Uh, Ruby writes in inside the den. Uh, can we take a look at natural gas? You're long again at uh, 425 after your report before the show. Thanks. So let's go take a look at natural gas out here. Uh, we'll go take a look at, so as I can find it, give me a moment out here. As soon as I can find it, where's natural gas? Natural gas is in the natural gas section. I just have uh, so many tabs right now that uh, I'm struggling to find where that section is. Okay, it should be right after light speed crude. So here's natural gas. And Ruby, um, you're trading the January contract, or did you switch over to uh, February just yet? Regardless, though, um, and you know what I want to also do? I want to switch. Oh, you're not even take a look at my screen. Mr. Bill was getting ready, to, I'm sure, to bop me upside the head with a two-by-four two, boy, two by four saying chart. There you go. I knew it was coming, and uh, that's a beautiful thing out there. So now let's go ahead and take a look. at. Here's the charts that I was looking at. While you're doing that, I'm going to go on my other screen and uh, get something fired up here so that we can take a look at, well, let me try to do it this way, uh, trading natural gas. Hopefully this works. Sometimes sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, so here, when you take a look at natural gas, so here's, here's a slight problem that you've got, Ruby, and that is that price is below the bottom of the weekly profile. So whether it's a January or it's the February contract out here, uh, January's contract price low is 43.47. Uh, 4.347 is what I should say, and in the uh, in the February contract, you're down to 4.275. So with price being below those levels, we really want to be able to see some kind of bottoming signal. And my other charts are trying to fire up here, but I just have too many things open, and we'll we'll come back to it. Um, what else should we be taking a look at inside of natural gas out here? Okay, they're slowly, they're slowly pulling up. So it looks to me, Ruby, and I'm just, I don't have all the charts here. I'm just going to tell you what I see first, and then we'll go to the charts. It looks to me like the January contract is trying to pull back to 4.089. That is the bottom of its weekly TD9 breakout level. Now, I believe on the daily time frame uh, chart, we're going to see the same thing. It won't be the first TD9 breakout level. I believe it is the second out there and so i don't see the um i don't see the signal from those time frames to suggest that you take a long position but you're more of an intraday type trader i believe if that is correct and so really what you and i what you would ask me to do i think would be to take a look at those short-term time frame charts so let's do this here uh let me see if i've got a question that has come in where i don't have to rely on my white background charts for the moment and then uh we'll come back to uh, natural gas because it's just not populating as fast well come on maybe i say that and i'm saying come on populate 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 well let me show you what it is i'm looking at right now i won't be able to move the charts until they have fully populated but at least you'll get a feel for what i'm looking at so if in fact this is just kind of intraday type trading out here then what we're really focused on are the short-term time frame so one of those would be as an example the 30 minute so on a 30 minute chart out here, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It's not clear to me if you're gonna get a TD nine count bottom. In order to get a TD nine count bottom, price has got to close below 4.273. And you're at 4.285 right now. But Ruby, on a short term basis, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That's assuming that in the next six minutes, this uh, bullish engulfing candle doesn't give it up. And price is running right up into resistance. That's at that uh, oscillator and change line. And that's priced at 4.287. So Ruby, on a 30 minute basis, if price can close about 4.287, you should see a run to 4.387 to 4.48 that's coming from the january contract out there if i look at the 60 minute time frame that's in your bottom left you'll see it's also trying to form a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern uh it might form a bullish engulfing candle here it just depends on the close the 120 minute chart has got bar number nine of a td9 count the 240 minute chart has got bar number eight of a td9 count the five hour chart which is populated isn't helping us out but what i really want you to focus on here this 4.089 you can see that's a breakout level on the daily that's also so the breakout level on the weekly, I believe that is more likely than not where natural gas is headed to. And that is um, uh, and another reason to suggest that is with price being below the bottom of those weekly profiles. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to natural gas. And um, there's not much else that I can add. So uh, thanks for the request out there. Now let's go to our next request. This one coming in by email from Jeff out here. And I need to get back to a, a different set of charts. So just give me a moment to do that. And then I have to remember to change the screens out there. So we're going to do that. So you're not just looking at that uh, a woman uh, running past, uh, I'd have to say, my second favorite set of rocks out there. 
Um, so let's go take a look at so Jeff's questions about Netflix. So I'm going to go back to the black background screen and we'll punch that in. First, I'm going to get Netflix going on my other chart, NFLX. So what is the question? First, let's say, let me get my work here set up. Where is the three time frame chart? NFLX. Here we go. NFLX. Sorry about that, folks. So I got to actually type in the correct symbol out here. Very helpful. So Jeff writes in Jeff in Tennessee. Please take a look at the support levels for Netflix for the next few weeks. Okay. So Netflix, I think we talked about Netflix yesterday. It's got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, is my recollection. Your next level of support, because price closed below the bottom of the daily out there, Jeff, your next level of TAS market profile support is 617.24. That's the center of its weekly profile. When we get back, we'll go take a look at that white background chart, see if there's anything else we can find for you. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. So we're taking a look at Netflix out here. We got Stevie's white background charts, the uh, Ninja Trader charts out there with uh, many of my tools. And so, Jeff, the next level of support for you is 628.65. That's courtesy of the TD9 count breakout level. Now, we don't have any kind of a bottoming signal. In fact, there's likely an A to B equals CD to the downside. We'll go back to the uh, black background charts out there. We So we may have a confirmed A to B equals CD if the volume from yesterday uh, exceeds the swing point that it passed. But you still have a potential level of support at 628.65. If that area doesn't hold, 
on a daily basis it says 549. I wouldn't go there just yet as the 549. Instead, I come to the weekly chart and look at those profile levels. And so 61724 would be one, and then 58037, and then 51230. Now, I do have, <laughs> excuse me, I do have a wave number seven top out here. Uh, that is the seventh wave move. That is letter G, courtesy of the uh, Chapman wave. Uh, so you do have a valid top on the weekly basis as well. Monthly chart, not so much, not yet. And the monthly chart says, uh, <coughs> Jeff, to watch <coughs> the 622 area. My screen shows 622.21, but it's not going to be exactly that number as price pulls back. So it's in the 620-ish type area, I would say, and if price were to close below that, then the other levels that we were looking at should come to fruition out there. But back to the daily time frame. What kind of volume did Netflix generate yesterday? Netflix had volume of 5.6 million shares, was passing a swing point that had 2.2. So now what you have out here uh, is you have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, in order for that A to B equals CD to the downside to, for it to come to fruition out there, price is going to have to take out that TD9 count breakdown resistance. So that's how you'll know if, uh, in fact, Netflix is going to try to fulfill this A to B equals CD. Now, the one-to-one -one takes us to 621.47. I don't believe that is where price is targeting. I believe it's more like the 606.52, maybe even 587. But we have to take this one step at a time. We'll let the markets tell us. But with regard to your next levels of support inside of Netflix, you're looking at 617.24 on the weekly chart. That's the center of its profile. And on the daily, you're looking at 628.65. So, Jeff, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that helps you out and have a wonderful Wednesday. The next question coming in from Marty. Marty wants to take a look at Saba. Well, that's good because uh, Dan and the Tigers, Dan, that is one of his uh, favorite stocks, I believe, uh, although he may have many. But as we take a look at Cassaba Sciences out here, the question from Marty is, what do the charts tell you long and short term for Saba? Well, with regard to a short-term time frame, price is trading with inside its bullish structured. No, it's, I take that back. It's not a bullish structured daily profile. It's a more of a bearish structured daily profile. But if you're asking me, where is support? Support is at 47.96. Now, that level was already tested once. It was tested on November 17th. In fact, price closed below that. But Stevie's got the two-day rule out here. The very next day, price got back above that. So that's your key level of support. Was that one of the things you were looking at? Yeah. So now, if price breaks through that... 47.96. Well, let me get Saba on my other school. Let, let's do So you've got, let's let's finish it off this way. Come on, Steve-O, get your act together. 47.96 is one level of support, bottom of the daily. 45.11 is another level of support. That's the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. And that's it really, because the monthly says 28.87. So we're not gonna go there. So we've got 45.11 and 47.96. How about the white background charts? The white background charts say, watch 43.11. In fact, I, I would be I would say you'd, you'd want to really consider being a buyer at the 4311 area. That's the breakout level when price pulled back, pulled back on November, the uh, October 29th and November the 1st. Uh, that is where price found support. What price did was it made its way all the way up to its breakdown level at 96.63. Can't bust them up. What you try to do, bust them down. That's exactly what appears to be going on right now. So you've got your support areas, and that's coming from the daily time frame. The weekly set of charts out here is not providing us with any more information. It does say that if price were to close below 45.11, we'd be looking at run to 36.05. So Saba, Cassaba Sciences, looks like it wants to head lower. I'd really watch that 43.11 area to the extent, uh, Marty, that you're looking to get into a long-term position. So thanks so much for writing in and hope that helps you out. Next question here, going to uh, Eddie. And Eddie writes in, let's see here, is there a, da, 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 da. So the industry started out strong and now getting soft. Do you still think the bottom is in for at least the next two weeks? Also, can you go over what you touched on yesterday, Tom O'Brien show, about the possibility of a downturn in the markets for the next two to four years? So, uh, Eddie, I'm going to come back to that set of questions out here. Um if I have something else to look at, because that's going to require me to get something else set up. So what we'll do is during the breakout here, uh, I'll go ahead and pull that information up and I'll come back to your question. So let me go to the next one out here. And that is uh, from David H. And David wants to take a look at Tesla, TSLA out here. So let me get that uh, fired up on our set of charts. Steve, based on your work, do you see that Tesla could hit 1200 by this Friday? You got the 1160 calls. So in order for that to happen, 
out here. You certainly want to see this stay above 1131.48. 1131.48 is the top of the daily profile. It's the only profile that comes into play, um, uh, David, when we're taking a look at this. Now, price is moving higher, and it's pushing into a swing point from November 22nd. And the high there was 1201. And you're asking, can it get to 1200? That swing point had 33 million shares. Yesterday, you were pushing with 27. Today, you're with 12. So you're pushing into that swing point with lighter volume. Now, you're still in it, so you could get up there. But it's not ideally what it is that you'd like to see out here. So um, is it possible? Your question was based on your work. Do you see Tesla? Do I see that it could? Uh, and the answer is it could, but it's it's missing that volume component that you would like to see. Now, let's see if the white background charts provide us with any additional information out here. And on the daily time frame, ah, oh, shoot, what uh, the move higher today, it's uh, been thwarted by Stevie's green line, the oscillator and change line, currently printed at 1164. So that's another area where price is going to need to close. If you did see a close above that today. Uh, that would be a signal that, yeah, price should go ahead and make a run for that swing point that you're looking at. If you don't, then you're kind of in neutral territory as long as price is above 1131, but below 1164, you're really in a neutral zone. It says, geez, I, I would be guessing, and I don't really like to guess. I like to have conviction behind what it is that I say. And if it's a guess, I have conviction behind, hey, I would be guessing. And that's not really what you're looking for. Now, the weekly chart looks pretty good. Let's look at the short-term time frame charts. What do we have out here? So we do have a 30-minute TD9 count top, and uh, that is being challenged right now. And if price can close above... Jeez Louise, how did I do that? Talk about spinning the wheel. If price can close, what the heck? I got to the weekly? All right, back to the 30-minute chart. What? That's weird. I guess I wasn't looking at a 30-minute chart for Tesla. So the 30-minute chart for Tesla looks like it's going to get down maybe to 1125.53. 1125.90, so that's not looking good for you, uh, although it's just a 30-minute chart. 65-minute chart, not helpful. 130-minute chart, mm, not necessarily that helpful. 195, yeah, so you know what? Your question is a solid question. I understand you've got those call options. And when I take a look at uh, Tesla out here, it's not clear to me that it's going to do that. It just doesn't have the volume and uh, being, uh, no, I, I wouldn't do anything till the end of the day. If you get a close above 1164, stay. If you don't and you've made some money, you know, maybe you go ahead and you take those uh, profits off the table. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back and we'll go try to answer Eddie's questions. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we've got a chart up on our screen here. Uh, this is a historical chart. So this chart takes us back. It actually... The data that I have goes back to 1896. I don't know why on this chart here uh, it uh, began in 1926. But hey, come on, that's that's back fairly far, right? We're looking at about 100 years out here. And uh, so when you just put up the annual charts, the yearly charts out there, so I've got a tool. You're familiar with the TD9 count tool. I can use that to, con to also count consecutive closes. Now, I need at least two consecutive closes, either higher or lower. In this case here, we're just studying the moves to the downside. And so if we go back to um, 1926 out here, we'll see that uh, the, the top that was set in 1929, that was a move lower for four years. So you can see the ones, the twos, and threes. The multiple numbers are just simply my my uh, archaic system right now. I, I, did not, I did not intend to use this tool for this purpose, but it allows me to get those counts. So I'm looking for just simply going back through time, uh, whenever we've had uh, bear markets out there, uh, do you know what 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 does that result in? What should we take a look at? So we had a four year decline from the top in 1929. Back in 1941, we had a three year decline. Uh, back here in the 1972 73 time period, we had a two year decline. 75 76 was a two year decline out here. Uh, if we move forward, 2007 top as an example was a three year decline. So what we're seeing here, and there's a couple back here. You'll see some two years back. Well, that was a 73 74. So we've already taken a look at. Now, granted, the sample size is small it's not really that small we went back to 1926 out here but what we're seeing is that the period of time when there's some type of significant top typically lasts between two to four bars or two to four years in this instance so i did that was what i was referring to there so that's the first place so then we fast forward to what's going on right now inside the dow now this is the dow equity future contract out here and as we take a look at coming off of the um bottom from March of 2020. This one has the counts up at the top and it has the counts at the bottom. Again, we're just focused the counts at the bottom. So we can see that the first retracement in essence was a uh, two consecutive month. With, and by, by lower closes, it's, it's close. It's close versus close. Not intraday versus intraday. It's just close versus close. So you can see you got that two bar bottom. It's basically a knee jerk uh, bottom. You've got another two bar bottom. You have a three bar bottom. You've got another two, another two, another two, another three. And last week was bar number three uh, for the Dow Equity Future contract. So the thought process there was if the trend is still in effect out here, then we should see a we should see a higher close from last week. Now, last week close inside the Dow Equity Future contract was out at thirty four six thirty. What and we're trading right now at thirty four five sixty two. So what happens if we don't close above that? Well, that would seem to indicate to me, I don't know about to you, not that it couldn't be a bottom because it can take place between two and four bars out here, but it would really suggest that what we are looking at out here since those March lows, um, kind of like vaccines, they're waning. Okay, and that says, hey, maybe we've got something else here to consider, which really goes into your question here, Eddie, about uh, do I have that same kind of conviction that we're going to move higher into the end of the year, uh, matching, in essence, the uh, seasonal factor. 
And uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Uh, and what I mean by that is you and I have got to take a look at the chart here. So if, in fact, the Dow closes below last week's low, I would say, hmm, something to think about. So those are the charts, Eddie. I hope that that helps you out. And uh, sometimes we just have to wait for the uh, charts to do their thing and tell us what uh, the information is. And that's certainly what we're going to do in this case here. So I do hope that that uh, helps you. Now, what's going on inside the market day is is totally expected, right? Why would you say, right, Steve? Right? Well, I would say that because what did we have take place yesterday? We had that one-day rate of change. It was above 10%. Yesterday's one-day rate of change of the spot volatility index was... 18.42%. Mm. So we've gotten a bounce that is associated with that. Um, so that part of it is over. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange had advanced decline oscillator, extreme oversold condition. We talked about that yesterday. So, so far the bounce is just working that off just a bit. But right now, uh, in Eddie, and I, and I really showed it to you this way, or, or you know, we went to the short-term time frame charts to help us answer those questions. And as we take a look at it, give me a moment here. That's this chart, I believe, yeah. So here's the NQ, this is the strong dog. And the strong dog, you see those, you can see resistance. It's as clear as can be. At least it's clear, I could, I, I, I don't make this stuff up. Now we're just looking at closes out here. Sometimes that's important to do. So not unless the NQ gets above 16,433, Eddie, would I then say, okay, yeah, we've got a good chance to uh, rally and move higher. So hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for waiting and uh, have a, a wonderful Wednesday. The next question comes in from Hector and the fuel injectors, and that would be Patty. And uh, they uh, pass on happy Wednesday greetings to each of you. Oh, by the way, Garo, in case you're listening, I received an email yesterday. I believe it might have been from a mic, but I, I, I apologize. But I received an email yesterday, and Garo, he was complimenting you. So because of your calls in and my pulling up your charts out there and walking, you know, allowing you to walk us through what you look at, your parabolic SAR tools out here. Uh, this individual has started applying it to his trading. And he says he's just having really great results uh, using that in combination with the other tools that he uses out there. So I wanted to thank you. I wanted to pass that along to you, Garo, and certainly want to thank you and everybody else. If you've got some other trading system that you use or ideas, you know, no reason to not call into the show. And, you know, we can take a look at that together and see how your system, um, how, how my tools might be able to add to what it is that you're doing out there to assist you with your trade investing. Back to Hector, though, and the fuel injectors out here. And that is happy, wonderful Wednesday. We're back at you. Moo, uh, which is not a bad sake out there. That is uh, Tiger's favorite sake. And it's not Stevie's favorite sake. But MU is the ticker symbol. And that's really what not what Hector was calling about was uh, Moo, the sake. He wanted to talk about uh, Micron technology. So Stevie's just trying to get to my three panel charts out here. And now we can go ahead and read the question. The question goes like this. Moo on a weekly uh, ABC up volume mucho strong. Um, okay, so I've got my weekly chart out here. It's got the potential for an A to B equals CD, but I wouldn't say it's an A to B equals CD at this stage here. It's got to take out its swing point of 96.96. Um, can you please work an A to B equals CD projection? And I love the I love the further to the left of the CD. Yeah, yeah, you bet that, especially with, yeah, good, good. So, Hector, on a weekly basis, I don't have an A to B equals CD to the upside. I can draw one in, which I have here, and we'll just simply expand out that chart. And it would look like this to me. Well, went away. So, let's actually draw you in the larger A to B equals CD, what I would really call the correct one. So, if this were to form an A to B equals CD, in order to do that, it's got to take out the 96.96 level. Or, and, and so, let's take a look at this. So you've got your A point down here would be March of 2020. That makes sense. The B point out here is the high from April of 2021, April 12th, I believe that was. And the C point is the slow down here into October the 11th. So yeah, it's moving higher out there. Yes, it's along the C to D, the left-hand side. So let me get rid of these retracement levels out here. So I'll tell you what Hector's looking at, and rightfully so. So Hector's looking at right now the potential. Oh, why didn't it delete that? moment here there we go so now it's a little bit cleaner so what Hector's looking at he's saying hey look at this price move along the left side of that C to D leg and that is mucho grande uh, strong but we won't have an A to B equals CD until price takes out this swing point on a weekly basis there was 93 million shares up there last week 
course of holiday, well, 104 million shares, not bad. This week so far, 69. But you got to get above 96, 96 hectare with regard to Micron to get that A to B equals CD to come to fruition. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? A Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. Uh, so, uh, Hector, you've got some resistance on Micron. I know this is one you asked, you didn't ask about, but I'm assuming you're long uh, in this position out here. So your next resistance level is where price hit today, 87.71. Now, it's moving higher with some pretty good volume. you got 23 million shares behind it. You really want to see price take that out. If it doesn't, does that mean the move is over? No, no, no. just means it could consolidate and pull back to the 83.95, maybe even 82.70. So that's one level for Micron that you've got. The next level above that profile is this TD9 breakdown resistance level. That's at 90.68, and that's the area where you really want to see price close above. But because this has a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top, it's really that high from April 16th, and that high is at 96.96. Not until price gets above that will you be in the clear to the upside. But I see what you're saying, and that's uh, great to get that guy off the screen, would you? Get that guy off the screen. You know who I'm referring to. Um, so we've got about a minute to go. Let's go take a look at, uh, get updated on the short-term time frame charts here, if I can get to it. Newsletter equity futures chart. Uh, get me, let me change screens out here. 
and we'll get right back to this. So we were talking about the NQ, and that's really an area, it's, or it's the it's really what we should be focused on, in my opinion, because if this starts to fail, then the rest of the market should, uh, which it's already had some failures out here, should continue on. So when we take a look at the NQ, testing, remember that the body of the candle is the essence of price. The, the wicks uh, the, uh, on these uh, candles out here, the upper shadows, lower shadows, that's just the screaming meme, so to speak. So if we see a close, a body candle close, low 16, 184.75, the NQ, then we should see price move lower. If that holds, which it has so far, uh, then we could see price bounce up, and we should see price bounce up to about the 16, 315-ish area. You can see, in, or look at the very upper right-hand corner chart. See how that oscillator and change line just changed colors? We should see price and that line catch up to each other. Folks, stay tuned. You've got two more wonderful hours left. David White with the Power Trading Hour. He's up next. He's followed by Obi-Wan Kenobi, Tom O'Brien. He'll take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Thursday at 1 o'clock. Have a wonderful Wednesday, folks. We'll see you again soon.